6 a.m. on our Monday morning. Welcome to Creme 2 Morning News. I'm Jen York and I'm Brittany Bailey. Breaking this morning, Dutch police say one person is dead. Several other people are hurt after a shooting in the Netherlands. A manhunt is underway for the shooter. Police say the incident could be a terrorist attack. Dutch police mili and military are on high alert at the country's airports. Of course, we will keep tabs on that situation and bring you the latest details right here on Creme 2 Morning News. We also are tracking breaking news out of Texas this morning. That is where a large fire is burning at a chemical plant. We are taking a live look at that scene right now. That fire is burning at the Intercontinental Terminals Company in Deer Park, Texas. The company says eight of its tanks are on fire. Firefighters are now using foam to prevent the fires from spreading. The fire is burning chemicals used in nail polish remover, paint thinners and glues. The fire started yesterday, but it spread to additional tanks this morning. Now, authorities are telling people to stay away from that area. The school district in that area is closed for the day. And I was also reading some reports from our sister station in Houston. I mean, you can see the black smoke mm -hmm. in that area. They say right now it's not at a, a threat level where they need to start evacuating mm -hmm. people, but I would imagine that's something that they're going to be watching throughout the day. I know that the local meteorologists there also are keeping a close eye on the wind speed mm -hmm. and direction and all of that to see how that will play into everything. So just a serious situation that we will continue to track this morning. Meanwhile, here locally, Sandpoint police are asking for your help in finding a missing person. Robert Cameron Hegseth Wahali was reported missing yesterday. He is 26 years old. If you have any information, you are asked to call Bonner County Dispatch. That number is on your screen. Well, now at 602, as we give you a live look at a lit up Gateway Bridge in downtown Spokane, we will send things over to Evan Arani now in the Weather Center this morning. Brittany and Jen, I think everyone is very happy to be seeing uh, those conditions outside uh, over the weekend. We saw beautiful skies. They were warmer temperatures than average. Uh, to give you an idea of what we're seeing outside right now, we're in the 20s and the 30s. The temperature outside right now in Spokane is 30 degrees. The afternoon high temperature as of a week ago was around where those temperatures are right now. So so uh, we are really seeing that warm up happen. If you were out for St. Patrick's Day or for at any point of the weekend, you probably uh, were able to enjoy some of those warmer temperatures and sunny skies around us. Spokane right now, 30 degrees, 26 in Othello, 31 in Pomeroy. And take a look at where we go as the day goes on. 55 degrees will be that afternoon high. Maybe portions of the northwest hitting the upper 50s, though uh, right now it looks like Spokane will hang right in the middle of that. Uh, Coeur d'Alene expecting 54 degrees as their afternoon high. But all of our region from eastern Washington, Washington to central Washington all the way across Idaho. Uh, we are seeing a good amount of sunny skies, no interference from cloud cover or any precipitation. Here's what we have uh, as far as future tracker goes. A uh, much wider look area of high pressure sits overhead and what that high pressure is bringing with it is calmer conditions, clearer skies, warmer temperatures, pretty much all of the good things that you'd want leading up to the start of the spring season. So you can see continuing now on into your Tuesday and your Wednesday, no chance of that ridge breaking down. The next chance for any uh, wet weather, uh, spring like showers maybe is going to be by the time we get from your Friday into your Saturday. It is now 6.03. I'll send things over to Cody Crawford. He is checking up on what traffic looks like this morning. Hi, Cody. Good morning. We're taking a look outside right now and road conditions are looking normal for today, but it looks like traffic is starting to pick up on the bigger city roads in town and on I-90. And if you are headed to work at 603 this morning, uh, your commute should go pretty normal. You can stay at normal speeds at 60 miles an hour. And that is all I have for now. So I'll send it back to the studio. Cody, thank you. Zag fans, it is official. The Gonzaga men's team is a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. The Bulldogs are the first seed in the West region. The Zags are headed to Salt Lake City for the opening rounds. The team will be playing the winner of the Fairley Dickinson and Prairie View A&M game. That matches tomorrow in Dayton, Ohio. You can watch that on True TV at 3.40 p.m. Now, for those who don't know, the NCAA tournament has play in games. Now, both of those teams that we're talking about are 16 seed teams. The winner of the 16 seed matchup goes up against the first seed in this case, which is Gonzaga. The Zags are ready to make a run, whatever the matchup may be. Take a look at the team reaction on Selection Sunday. <laughs> Oh, 
Well, that was a video tweeted by the men's basketball team and had the caption, ready to dance. Well, that announcement comes just after the team had a tough loss to St. Mary's in the West Coast Conference Tournament Final. Player Brandon Clark called it a reality check. He says it was a reminder to his teammates to not let their feet off the gas pedal. It was a sentiment head coach Mark Few echoed. Our focus and attentiveness is up and, and uh, ready to go because if you don't if you don't compete or either mentally or physically, uh, you're out of this thing in a hurry. One member on the team motivated to make this tournament run memorable is senior leader Josh Perkins. This is the last ride for him. He was part of the team when the Zags made it to the final four, but he says this time he wants to help lead the Zags to the first ever national title. We're playing for each other, you know, playing for the love we have for one another, um, playing for the right reasons, you know, and, you know, I love these dudes and why not, you know, have that last memory together, you know, cutting nets down. Um, so that's what I've been, you know, envisioning and that's what I want. Um, and I think just having that be my last go around is definitely something I'm trying to get my all to. Well, there is a lot to know about the NCAA tournament. Creme 2 sports anchor Karthik Venkatraman breaks down the obstacles the Zags might face. Gonzaga is an arguably the toughest region in the NCAA tournament, but I guess that's how the cookie crumbles when you're the final one seed. If the Zags are going to make a title run, there will be some tough opponents on the horizon, but let's start in the first round. Gonzaga's region is one with a play-in game between two 16 seeds. That matchup will be on Tuesday between Fairleigh Dickinson and Prairie View A&M. Fairleigh Dickinson comes from the Northeast Conference and are winners of eight straight. They are balanced with five players who score in double figures. Prairie View A&M won the SWAC conference and it's their defense that makes an impact. They hold teams to low shooting percentages and only 62 points per game. But I think no matter what happens, Gonzaga cruises against either opponent. They will probably win by 30 or 40 points and that's going to move them into the second round. And in that second round, I think they will likely play Syracuse. The Orange, which you all know, have given Gonzaga some trouble in the past most recently in the 2016 Sweet 16. Gonzaga did play Washington earlier this year, who is really the second coming of Syracuse, if you will. UW is led by head coach Mike Hopkins, who comes from the Jim Beheim's coaching tree. The Huskies gave Gonzaga a run for their money with their defense. UW was able to make a game out of it, and it took Rui Hachimura's game winner to put UW away. I like Hachimura in a matchup to dissect the high post of a Syracuse 2-3 zone. He could take advantage with his jumper and driving ability, and if Hachimura is having a big game, I'll take the Zags. I've come on the show and talked about teams that can give the Zags trouble, and those are the teams that can slow the game down and put together a full 40 minutes of lockdown defense. Basically what St. Mary's was able to do in the West Coast Conference Tournament Final and what San Diego was able to do at some times. There are some teams that could cause Gonzaga problems in that department. Here's a list of teams that rank in the top 50 in defensive efficiency rating with a slower pace of play in Gonzaga's region. Good news for Gonzaga though, they wouldn't have to play both Michigan and Texas Tech. The Bulldogs would be only looking at facing one of them potentially in the Elite Eight. Vermont could be a sleeper. That could be a surprise for some people. They have a pretty good defense. Uh, maybe a Florida State who the Zags lost to last year. The big note to remember though is Florida State and Vermont play each other. So one is going to lose there. So that could be a Sweet 16 where Gonzaga plays one of them. And then Michigan or Texas Tech will get knocked out before a potential Elite Eight matchup with Gonzaga. So maybe two teams at max that could give the Zags some trouble before the Final Four. Although in March, one tough game is all it could take to get bumped out. I know for the Zags, it's national title or bust for them, but a fifth consecutive Sweet 16 is at least in the making here. Back to you all. Well, we know Zag fans travel well, so here is how you can see the team play in Salt Lake City. The school makes tournament tickets available to season ticket holders, so those fans are told to monitor their email to see how many tickets they can buy. Well, of course, we love cheering on the Zags, but there is another fun part to March Madness. Filling out your bracket, right? Yeah. It's that time of year again. So we're inviting you to join the Creme 2 March Bracket Challenge. If you fill out and submit a perfect bracket, you have the chance to win $1 million. 
Good luck with that. We've talked about those <laughs> odds, but you know, you could do it. Plus, if you beat Creme 2 Sports Director Brenna Green's weekly score, you could win two pizzas from Papa Murphy's. That's a little easier to do. The local grand prize includes a one night stay at Northern Quest Resort and Casino and a $100 gift card to the Windfall Store at the casino. You also win a $50 gift card to the restaurant Epic and two summer concert tickets. The rules and entry are simple. Just head over to creme.com and make sure to get your brackets filled out before this Thursday. They have to be done before the beginning of the tournament. Is that noon? Isn't it usually noon? Tip off I is usually around Or is it noon. nine our time? I forget now. We don't have a noon show on Thursday and Friday, so I'm willing to bet it's sometime between nine and noon. <laughs> yes, we'll get that <laughs> nailed down. We don't want to tell you wrong, but just don't. Yes. Basically, you can't wait till the end of the day on Thursday or yeah, Wednesday. Yeah, get it done yeah. today. Well, now that we, solved. that's right, that's right. Well, now that we know where the men are going, we are turning our attention to the women. They find out their seed today. Yeah, Selection Monday airs at 4 o'clock on ESPN. Right after their selection this afternoon, we will be talking with the women during our 5 o'clock newscast. And also don't forget to tune in to Creme 2's Bulldog Madness special at 7 p.m. this Wednesday. It will be one hour devoted to the Zags, and we will have a full interview with GU guard Josh Perkins.